All right. So we're going to be talking about how to, about openings. Uh, I'll go first. I you know I found a, a guy. I found royalty free uh, royalty free music. Um, I found a, a guy that wasn't me <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to welcome everybody. Um, uh, you know quickly and. Um, my system is I actually like to talk for a few for about 20 seconds, then drop in that opening buffer, then come back out of it and hit the show. Anyway, that's the way that, and, and I've got the same guy closing me off too, but um, let's start with the openings. Anybody got some, some thoughts on that? I got, I got, uh, can you hear me? Okay. I don't know if my, yeah, I've, uh, I've done this a few times and um uh, I'm teaching tonight, and the guest speaker is a guy named Guy Kawasaki. And if you've been around, you know who Guy Kawasaki is. He's, uh, he was the first evangelist for Apple. And um, so he has a podcast. It's called Remarkable People. And so I listened to his podcast yesterday, and I said to myself, wow, this guy's pretty good in writing, but boy, his opening is like an hour. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, this is ramble on and on and on and, and on and this. It's just, I uh, eat so even if you're good, Kawasaki's way good. It doesn't mean to have that skill for audio. So the way I, because I, I was trained on NPR for 25 years, I like to have uh, some kind of music opening and then go right into it. And I don't like to ramble on and go, well, you know, Chad and I uh, were golfing uh, last Tuesday and it started to rain. And, and then I saw a square. No, <laughs> I just hate it. I can't take it. Now, now this podcast is with two people that I know. Well, I, don't, I know it's a guy named Daniel Pink in town here. He's a famous guy. And, uh, and that's who he was interviewing. And Daniel Pink was rambling too. <laughs> I met Daniel, long story, but I, I just know some characters in town. So, uh, so that's my, my advice is a uh, uh, little bit of music at the beginning, something. Welcome to the Rob Joel's podcast. And today we're going to talk about uh, the books that John's got behind him or something. I mean, so I like to punch hard and ask questions later. So Marilyn, how about you? Hi. Um, I like to start with uh, a problem statement that the audience can identify with. So they say, oh, that's my problem. Let me hear what she has to say about that. And then you go into, um, you know, how, how you can, uh, you know, whatever your teaching points are, or talking points or what have you. Uh, or another approach, instead of starting with the problem, is to start with, the the vision the hope the inspiration of what they want to achieve it's like you know we all want to be able to do this and then you go into the problem but here are the obstacles you know that typically prevent us from reaching those goals but very short and sweet you know a very you know short storyline so uh yeah it's something that gets the audience's attention first so they say either oh that's my problem you know maybe i can learn how to solve it or yeah that's what i want to accomplish maybe i can learn how to do that so chad uh, how about you yeah that's interesting i come from a back video background so it's more visual and audio obviously so and that's a big thing in video right especially the last 10 years is you you have to grab them right off the bat but vision video so visual right and you so you put your best shot up front or something, but now with it's audio only, you know, I'm still kind of getting used to what's the, what's the audio hook that's going to grab people. The current, our current podcast, we do a uh, more along the lines of what John is saying, just five seconds of music, introduce the, uh, the host and they say the name of the podcast, hey, we're talking to this person today, blah, 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 you know, dip out of the music sort of thing. So it's a little more traditional. But you know, I'm, that's why I'm here today. Here's some more ideas on how we can switch things up a little bit and try to try some new things. Yeah, I, I think I'm doing some one thing right, and, pro, and listening to John, I think I'm doing one thing wrong. Uh, you know, listen, we all have our own styles. I, 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 when we teach things, it's like, well, there's a style line, and then there's a technique line, and you're just getting the technique wrong. So don't lean on style so much sometimes. But I think if we all agree that we're going to put in something punchy and fast. Um, coming out of the gate, uh, whether we, you know whether we drop the music in and punch or punch and drop the music in, I think we're okay. And and I'm the same way, Marilyn. You know what you say really resonates with me because from a sales perspective, um, 
I never want to talk about the need. I want to talk about the problem. More people can identify with the problem than the need. And that's, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. So that's smart to do. Uh, I've found that I'm starting to play with it a little bit. Like I had an entrepreneur on yesterday and, and I think I came out of the gate with, oh, entrepreneurs, this is going to be your day because, you know, and, and then just teased it a little bit. So I'm getting, notice I'm giving myself my own gold stars. I think I've got that part right where I'm screwing up is I drop when, when I, my buffer ends, I go into the bio. And, um, and no one will send me a short bio. I'm assuming that's the same with you guys. I, I beg them. I even say three sentences, please. And it's just lazy. It's no, here's the one that my publicist or whatever wrote up. And it's, so we, we have to dig through it. Okay. But I come out of the bio and it's hard to make a, you know, a bio sexy, you know, it's impressive sometimes, but um, and then my first question tends to be, so, you know, well, welcome to the show. You know, it's kind of like, a, how did we get here? And it's almost like another bio that begins to swing in. And so I'm really scratching my head and going, I'm asking you all, how once once we get the first talk, how do we let the audience know who's on the show without boring them to tears before we get to that first question of, so what's the three things we got to know about, you know, eating marshmallows or whatever the hell we're talking about. So, um, but Talk, how, how do you guys handle that? Yeah, John. I've interviewed tons of people. Um, in about two weeks, I'm going to interview the CTO of the Space Force. It's a woman named Lisa Costa. She's got an MBA, a PhD. She, she had a wheelbarrow carry around her brains. It's brilliant. I mean, I could do it probably 30 minutes just intro for her background. But I, I think um, she's well known in, in the satellite and space community. And so all I have to say is... Um, you know, welcome to Constellations, a podcast from Creatives. Today in the studio, we have Lisa Costa, and she's going to share with us some of her ideas about the 10,000 planets that are going to be launched in the next year, or some kind of a, I like a number hook in there, something like that, you know, some kind of a, a little hook that's specific. And um, because if I just ramble on about, yeah, she has a PhD, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and I think people are more interested in, in 10,000 satellites in the next year. Well, what's it going to do to the Space Force? Well, why'd they bring in Lisa? So that's... Um, but you don't talk about Lisa is the you know, president of Space Force or the, you know, the manager of Space Force. And well, no, Space Force, of course, is the federal agency right. that is Sorry. responsible Sorry. for everything. Oh, no. Uh, and uh, my audience, I have a selective audience. My audience is mostly satellite and space enthusiasts. And yeah. there's so, I mean, you know, we're going to bring in, you know, uh, Willie Mays. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's big names that are just well known. Uh, for example, uh, Guy Kawasaki in, in my world, he's very well known, but it may not be in Maryland's or Chad's. So, so I, I think, um, I think you have to understand your audience to know some people don't know about this, certain, certain names that you just know. And, you know, um, the, the father of the internet is a guy named Vince Cerf. And I introduced him. As I thought it was I, Al Gore. <laughs> no, it was Vincent. So I introduced him as here is a guy who's working on deep space internet to Mars. Well, and then, then we went from there. And that's what he's doing, by the way. Right. Because <laughs> he invented the internet back 40 years ago. Now he's going out there. So I think some kind of a, a, a hook, like the classic public speaking hook. Um, and I'm talking too much. Let's, have, let's see what says Cheryl has to say. Yeah, I want to hear from Cheryl and Barb. So yeah. uh, Cheryl, why don't you go first? And Barbara, will put you on deck. Oh, as we as you get thrown into the lion's den here, what we're talking about is just how we're opening up these shows and, you know, how fat, how fast is fast? What kind of where is if you've got music and a bumper and a, and a voiceover, where's that coming in? So uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, if, if you've got a podcast running, um, your thoughts on the opening. Thank you. Good morning. It's my very first time with y'all. I'm in Los Angeles, so oh, it's a little good early. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, that was extra tough. Yeah, you're in yeah. LA. It's, uh, what is it, six something? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's and we true. immediately want to tell us everything you know about everything. But <laughs> all right, nice and easy. Uh, if you want, I can double back, but just- Oh, no, uh, dump, her in, my, dump her in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, hi. My answer will be very short because I do not have a podcast yet. I'm listening in to learn and- you got me with, you know, that's my hesitation is there's so many podcasts out there already. How do you get people's attention and, and get them to, yeah, stay listening once if they do tune in. So I'm just here to learn. Thank you. 
Good. All right. Well, we we we, uh, we started recording this one, by the way. So um, we have a Facebook group. Join the Facebook group, and you can see all of our, some of the meetings, and we're talking about mics and all kinds of stuff. So there's some nice stuff in there for you. Okay. Um, Barb, how about you? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm actually have not gotten to that point of my podcast. I'm still gathering some content. And then I that's why I'm here today, because I want some ideas on how to really apply that step. And, um, you know, I guess I'm kind of really hung up on a graphic too. like what, what is my graphic going to look like? That's a silly thing to be hung up, perhaps. But um, that's kind of where I am. And I think what your topic is today is really helpful to me. So I don't really have anything to contribute at this moment, um, but I'm loving the discussion. So thank you for, for having it, even though I can't contribute at this particular moment. Perfect. Well, you just contributed. You made, it made us all feel pretty good and smart about yes. ourselves. So thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love the discussion. I love, you know, the, yeah, I love all the discussion. It's, it's Perfect. Good. Well, that's what we do once a, once a month, the second Tuesday, usually of every yeah. month. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Um, so I'll double back. And then uh, again, uh, Chad, I think you can we'll put you on deck. But, um, you know, when I got started, my daughter, who's got a pretty good podcast in New York called Middle Children, I think that's what it's called. It's all about being a middle child. And, you know, they got a song and everything. But for my, I think it was for Hanukkah or my birthday or something. She got me a voiceover, a guy in New York that she works with. Um, and we wrote a very short kind of script of, you know, a pocket size pep talk each week, you know, without your host, Rob Jollis, you know, and uh, which I've heard, you know, 200 times now, and it's been it starting to drive me nuts. But um, I felt it was it was such a nice, it was such a nice gift, such a nice thing to have of not my voice, royalty free music, something very short and sweet, welcoming them in. Um, I think does some of that heavy lifting for what we're talking about. And, and it's repeatable and predictable, um, which for me, I want to do that. You know, I, I, be, I it's corny. I don't even know if it's any good, but I end with the exact same phrase every time. I kind of enter with, you know, we're going to do this, this, this. Let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk and hear from John. Um, so I'm trying to find a rhythm where there's a consistency of in the open, although the names are changing, people can kind of count on that. I just think that's effective. Uh, Chad, what do you think? Uh, tell me about your opening. That's mine. Well, so I've got a situation in that we had two co-hosts for the last couple of years, and this is a nonprofit animal protection podcast. Everything, the co-hosts are internal staff people. The guests are generally all staff. Um, the, it was a man and a woman, our co-hosts, and the man just left. He got another job, and he was really the intro guy like he sang opera like he had oh. this really great voice he um is a radio host as well and then we've lost our deep baritone guy who goes welcome to you know the podcast that sort of thing so now i've thrown our other co-host into the deep end and making her do the welcome to and she just doesn't have the confidence yet so now we're trying to find a new co-host uh so anyway i'm kind of in a in a tricky position right now we're doing interviews with various staff who have interest in being a co-host um, but we've been doing it about two two and a half years something like that john, john yeah i did want to hear from you john because yeah. i'm curious i'm i think you know the answer to the question i'm about to ask which is if we're looking for, for voiceover people there's some websites where you can really you know look, hear these guys test it out do you know anything about that and then follow it up with where you were going yeah, I want to address Barbara's issue first because I want to listen to the audience. Um, 15 minutes ago, I was on Fiverr and I ordered a logo. <laughs> and so it cost me 25 bucks. And I'm going to launch a podcast here in the next month. And so I start off with the logo. So, so Barb, what you want to do is um, visit Apple Podcasts, see what the logos look like and come up with something on Fiverr that matches. You can have them samples. I like this and this and this, and they'll come up with something that works. The only thing you have to remember is you got to be like 3000 by 3000 because then when you put on apple podcast it'll look good because that's the majority of listeners going to come from apple podcast so find out some logos that you like go to fiverr go to upwork find someone for 25 bucks and and get the logo done that's why there's no legal issues or problems at all so uh, and i 
literally I did it 50, but right before the show at 925, I did it. So, uh, but that's the key. You got to have a good quality issue. And then that logo can be used, you can use in the show notes page, mostly on Apple podcast, and then on your social promotion on LinkedIn and Twitter. So I think it's, and that's the first thing I'm, I have a list of what I'm doing to launch a podcast. First thing is getting the logo. So that's the answer for Barb. To go back to the opener. Uh, well, John, I, I wanted to say, I, thank you for mentioning Fiverr. I was actually going to mention that. I thought of that, that when Barb was, because I haven't used it, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I'm excellent. You really good. It. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, one That's real helpful. fast thing, and John, I'll hand it right back over to you about Fiverr is, I fell in love with it so much that I sort of stepped it up a little bit and made a mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I found a guy in... Um, not in India, but somewhere. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, I wonder what it would cost if I get somebody from there who just does a little bit of um, social media pushing for me. And uh, whoops, um, nice guy, but uh, Bangladesh, that's where he's from. Yeah. Uh, but anything he wrote was in broken English. It was, it was, a, it was a disaster, actually a, a humorous disaster, <laughs> because all of a sudden everything I began to uh, create and promote uh, that was appearing on different sites uh, looked like I didn't know how to spell and um, use the English language quite right. So <laughs> whoops to that. One more second. If you look in the chat area, I put something in there for you, Barb, um, that that a friend of mine gave me, um, uh, and it's about the requirements for your artwork and what John was saying, you know, the the pixels, everything that you need. So you'll get size, everything. Just pull that onto your desktop and that'll take care of all those questions. Back to you, John. Yeah. Thanks, I was just, guys. I appreciate it. You know, I've launched six podcasts and it's the same thing and kind of you just kind of know what to do. And this little document's exactly what you need. So John, how much did you pay for it? $25. Cool. Thank you so much. And I, I've been wanting to create it myself. And that was the thing to try to get a feel for the design. But I think I just need to give $25 to somebody else to get me started. Like at least we'll get something, right? So. Well, it, it, I mentioned a guy earlier, Guy Kawasaki, and he's the evangelist for a company called yes. Can, Canva. Yes. See, and, and they have I all kinds him. of, Im yeah, all kinds of images there. And yeah, so, it's just, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. all the suggestions and yeah. ideas. Thanks guys. Excellent. To get back to voiceover. I, I would rub, I would do graphics on Upwork or Fiverr. I probably wouldn't do voiceovers uh, in the radio community here. There seems to be a connection to people in New York who do voiceovers. And so I know several names in New York and uh, you can email me. I can share a name or two, but it's kind of like a, a horse race and know which horse is going to win. It's kind of carry carefully guarded name network you have up there in New York. I don't know why they're in New York, but they're all up there. And uh, if you want to email me, I can send you a name of a guy that I use. In fact, I'm going to use them next week. So <laughs> I'll have his email. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, all the audio engineers seem to know certain people and they're all kind of very informal and it's not very published. So um uh, that's my recommendation. I think I would avoid Upwork and Fiverr for the voice. Now, they could be fine. I mean, there's people on Fiverr in Iowa, uh, but the audio engineer's got the ear. And you might as well, you know, if an audio engineer tells you, well, you know, if your mechanic tells you you need tires, well, you probably need tires. If an audio engineer says Rob is good, then who might argue with an audio engineer? So, uh, so it's kind of done informally, I think. And maybe that's what your daughter came up with, Rob. This informal network in the radio and it's just very powerful, though. Yeah. Um, I'll show you one other thing. I, it's a little off track, but I want to show you something else I got from Fiverr that you might want to think about and create your own way. But I'm going to show it to you. And it's one of those things, $20, but with tip 25. Uh, you do want to tip those people, by the way. It's sort of like a, like a, you, they kind of expect it. Not a big tip, but they're very inexpensive and just be prepared for the tip. But one of the things that, um, that I like that I had created there was um, just my email. And, um, it, you know, that signature file, and I'm, I'm hoping you can see it. And, and I, you know, we don't have to put books and things there. You've got your own materials, and your own thoughts, but notice this one piece right here. There's the podcast. Um, if you're running a podcast, you're going to want to have a presence on LinkedIn. Um, you're probably going to be tweeting about it. I'm just moving my mouse around. I happen to have a blog, a thing I call a blog article, um, and then a Facebook fan page. You don't have to have them all. Maybe you've got Instagram, some others. But this was about 20 bucks, five more dollars for, uh, uh, you know, for the tip. And each one of those is taking them. That's take you right to the podcast, take you right where you want to go. And this, the books for me, take you to Amazon. So um, another ni nice little piece. Every time you're communicating with somebody, why not make it super easy for them to find that podcast? So again, Chad, thanks for opening up the door. 
I didn't know it was fiver or fiver or whatever it is, but you, know, you say tomato, I'll say tomato, but, um, but they're, they're, they're good. Um, and you just have to send them those links and pick your icons and they'll create it done. Yep. I want to go back to the openings. I have some openings for this uh, little meetup here. So here's an opening. Um, there are over 2 million feral pigs in Texas. They've called us billions of dollars of damage. Chad Cisneros is going to talk about the feral pig problem in Waco County. <laughs> I mean, some kind of a little, wow. I was in Texas last year with my wife and I read that. I went, what's going on? I was looking around the airport for these feral pigs. <laughs> but it's a really big, again, in the agricultural community, in the uh, e ecology, that's a big deal. You know, in the satellite and space community, no one cares. In the data center community, no one cares. But feral pigs, I mean, they're literally, I mean, they're just tearing up farmland, very valuable farmland. So a hook like that seems to be a good uh, opener for a podcast. Nice feral pig. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about, uh, can I get in right after the bumper? I, I still call this the opening. You know, uh, what, we know we've got, um, I don't know, a minute, 60 seconds to, hold, to, to get the audience. We'll hold them with a great interview, but, but we're talking about that hook. What about the, the classic question of, so tell me about yourself. Uh, should we just bury that? Is that needed? Uh, what do you guys think? You know, I've done over 900 interviews. The worst thing I can possibly do is turn to Chad and go, well, Chad, tell us about your background. I was in grade school and Rob and I went fishing and blah, blah, blah. yeah, we drove to California. No, no, I don't. <laughs> tell us about your background, Chad. Well, yeah, I, uh, I work with the ecology section in Texas and we're looking at the feral pig problem. Good. So what does that mean for people living in Austin? Well, it doesn't matter. I, I think that tell me about yourself. Boy, that, you might as well shoot yourself in the foot because I don't know where they're going to go. I, I, it could be a half hour later. How long it's going to take. <laughs> no. um, yeah, See, that's a good, that leads me to, I'm sorry, uh, Rob, forgive me. A pre-interview, John, I mean, do you, uh, we try to do a pre-interview with the guests. You know, I just do it. I'm not on air, but I do the yeah. pre-interview and get a question list together. And I feel like that's when I can help the guest hone their, their bio down to something a little more digestible. Yeah. Does that make sense? Have you done that? I assume you do that, John, or no? That's what you're supposed to do, but I've done it so often. I, 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 can, I can probably go to LinkedIn and YouTube and come up with an introduction in 15 minutes that is short, quick hits, okay? Chad's graduated of University of Maryland, focused on ecological sciences. Then he worked the federal government with, now he's working on the feral pig problem or some, something really short like that. And so uh, I think it's this, well, I think that the pre-interview is a crutch, but I, I've I've done it a lot, maybe too much. <laughs> you know what, Chad? I, I'm, I agree with John on this one. Plus, I just don't have the time to take every podcast and make it two podcasts in a sense. Yep. I, you know, my calendar is pretty full. But what I do is, um, I, you know, I bring people in and I have sort of three or four. If I want to know how to pronounce their name. I want to know what they're, you know, if they're promoting something. I want to talk about how we'll promote that kind of stuff. But I'm adding a new question. Um, a new statement, uh, because I, I, I had the two out of the last three podcasts and I just, it's not their fault. I didn't bring this up. I expect people, my guests to understand that we're going to have a conversation. And when you get somebody that gets uh, anxious or just is a little greener than they should be, the I two guests that just were going forever on answers. It was just a monologue. Um, and I actually had to go, wait, okay, well, I, I got a lot of un unpacking to do. And then I was like, so, and I'm, you know, and I'm taking notes, like, let's go back to the screwdriver. <laughs> you, right. about, you know, now your elbow was where, uh, but then, you know, the next question comes out, it's like, blah, 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 blah. so, you know, now a new one on my checklist is to explain to them that I, I can ask you, you know, what's the meaning of life? Could you go somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds on that answer? <laughs> Please. Uh, it's not, I'm, if I don't say that to them, why should I be disappointed? I'm, you know, I'm disappointed that I don't bring it up, but that's going to go into my pre-interview. It's just on the day of, um, you know, because it, boy, it's, then it just becomes a, a monologue. I and mean, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, you don't really need me. <laughs> we're, not, we're not having a conversation. And, yep. uh, in, in the my world, radio world, the um, it's called a liner or a bumper. The first thing is is a little bit of music. And Rob's going to talk about the feral pig problem in Texas or something. I don't crazy like that. You're really on this pig thing. This oh morning. yeah, go to All Texas. Right, stay it's there. A, stay locked a, in. You're you're on fire. It's, it's a big deal. Um, 
but what I see in many podcasts, because I listen to probably five a day, is this tease. And I think that you're talking about the tease. And so the tease is um, uh, Chad Cisneros says um, you should swim in the Potomac River in January. And, and they'll take that little tease and have it up front. And I think that can be done. But I think the tease, then the open, you know, the tease, the bumper, then the open, every step along the way, you have a chance of losing the audience. And so um, maybe the person listening doesn't, isn't interested in Chad swimming in the Potomac in January or something. I just, and it's in the middle of the interview. So Hey, I think no. that's, is that Dave? There we go. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you can go, you, the alteration the standard is, you know, bumper open. Some people do tease bumper open, but I'm afraid yeah. that if you're into the first 30 seconds, so. Well, I like a tease. I, I think my tease, I mean, talk me out of it, but I think my tease is better than my bumper. My bumper is just zing, you know, a pocket side pep dog. <laughs> Each week, Rob Giles. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> but I like, hey, you entrepreneurs, you know, I have something that's got a little bit of guts to it. Uh, and, and, and maybe, and again, that's why, uh, just so you know, Barb and, you know, uh, uh, and Cheryl, I'm learning too. Uh, these guys are more grizzled than I am. But, um, uh, but, I want to. I want somebody to hear a tease and say to themselves, "That doesn't sound like the topic I'm interested in today." And leave. Don't stay, because if you do, you may never come back because you're going to be so disappointed that, "Yep, that's just where we went for 30 minutes." <laughs> you know. So uh, when I write a, I write this blog, blog article for 13 years, I always throw out a, a, a mailing and with a link and tell them exactly what it's about in two sentences, so they don't hit the link. If it doesn't sound interesting, I'll be back in two weeks. We'll try again. So again, that's my thinking of, I, I, I want to out the topic. Yeah. No. So David Huff. I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm a voracious podcast listener. I want to hear a tease. I want to know exactly where this one's going before I decide if I'm just going to click to the next one. Yeah. It's a vote for you. Yeah. I, want to hear I, I agree completely. I want to know ahead of time. Otherwise, like you said, Rob, I won't bother to come back to that person's podcast if they've wasted my time. Right. Yeah. Good. All right. And David is is in and David is is, is another one who's kind of because uh, I met David a few times. So I'm, I'm handling your intro, David. Um, uh, eyeballing it, um, learning about podcasting, etc. I'll let you take there's your intro. That's that's your bio. <laughs> Jump on in. How you doing, David? Good. Sounds great. Like one of my guests from this week, <laughs> <laughs> he's probably he's probably running and getting his coffee. Go ahead. I've got a good opening. I got my third one. I wrote down for the show. Here's the opening. There are twelve thousand bridges in Europe that the Romans constructed that are still being used. Talk about construction and longevity, and and if you want to do concrete construction, we could do a whole. Po in fact, there are podcasts on. I want to call mine the precast podcast about concrete construction. So, so that's another shocking statement, you know, something, wow, is that true? The, yeah. the Pantheon is made of concrete, it's still standing. What about the bridge on I-95? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, and then drop in that hot music and that nice voiceover and then slide back in. But what I've learned today and I'm going to do a better job of and I'm walking away is um, I'm going to continue to shorten those bios and I'm coming out of the gate with textiles how did you get you know, see it i don't want to get into how'd you get the textiles because i open up that door with oh I started no studying you know when i was 11 a textile hit me in the head you know uh but anyway I, i'm gonna think out that first question now we got david on camera how yeah, you doing this yeah morning? i'm here now <laughs> good 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 to see you did i yeah, did i do a good yeah, intro I, for you i had another meeting so i couldn't jump in until now good it's good to see you yeah um, you too yeah um all right. Well, we're talking about uh, openings and, um, you know, David, I know you work on websites, um, which is something to keep in mind. We need, uh, but David's done some work with, with me. Um, so um, if you ever need website development, David, why don't you, you can go ahead and put your um, uh, contact information in that chat area. But when you build a website, you're kind of doing the same thing. And Marilyn, you know, once again, I think the good ones are show the problem. Don't show me the need. Don't, you know, don't show me how pretty the telephone is. Show me a, a kid standing at a bus stop scared because the parent hasn't arrived yet. And there's no way to contact them. Uh, as chilling as that may be. Uh, 
But uh, do you see a, a connection be, be, between the way you're hitting that website to grab uh, the eye and attention as fast as you can as to what we're doing? And you want to speak to that? Well, uh, I, I would say, you know, generally people are motivated um, by emotional, you know, decisions are made. I mean, Rob, you know this better than anyone, that uh, people make decisions on an emotional basis and then they use facts to justify it or rationalize it, <laughs> you know, so you got to, um, in fact, I've been uh, in some, I'm in a mastermind group and one of the things they, they do periodically is say, okay, which is the good ad and which is the bad ad? And the bad ad is just like some generic, like for a real estate agent, if you have like a picture of a house, that's like the worst thing. What you want is a picture of like happy new homeowners or something that has an emotional appeal. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, can I ask another question? Well, I, I, Rob is asking another question um, and it's a little bit off the hook. But um, yeah, my question is this. I have found that I know that when I was being interviewed and before I did a podcast, I was on a lot of podcasts. So, uh, you know, I saw all kinds of hosts or listened to. Um, and I was always a little disappointed in the host that um, didn't read the book or whatever. And why should I be disappointed? You know, were they going to read every single book from every author? Of course, they're not going to read my book. But for some weight reason, I thought they would just automatically know the really important areas to get to that you're going to want to, if you're going to want to spend time interviewing me, this is really what resonates. But the host doesn't know. Um, and now they may get lucky. So what I do, and I'm wondering if this is a bad practice, is I try and get my guests, I sort of explain that to them before they come in of, if you have some areas that you want me to lead you into, uh, give me a couple questions that would, would just tee you up for that area. So we take the guesswork out of it. It's funny because uh, for every five people, one of them always sends me the question and the answer. And I'm like, no, don't send me the answer. I don't want the answer. And I promise I'm gonna ask three more questions once you give me your answer, but I, I don't wanna leave this up to chance. Uh, is that a best practice? And, and, and what do you think about that? Grizzled guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the most grizzled one here, that's for sure. Uh, oh, yeah, you're good, a grizzled. Th the good news, the bad news is that uh, there's no deer in the headlights, but then you lose authenticity. And if I've learned anything from my three grown kids, they don't care if Rob wears a three piece suit, a bow tie, his top hat. They don't care. They just want him authentic. They don't care. He can have a t-shirt as long as he's authentic. It's, and I think that's, um, uh, it's hard to do visually and with the video and audio. It's, it's hard without um, having a little bit of fakeness to it. And so th that's what I try to do in my interviews is generally speaking, we know what we're going to talk about. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to interview the CTO of the space force coming up and, and we know we're probably going to have something with space and probably have some ideas where we're heading and going, but um I don't want to have her. Yes, that we have 2,500 people in uh, the Air Force Research Lab. Okay. Well, then we have 2,000 people at, you know, Los Alamos. Okay. It, it, boy, I lose the audience quickly. And, uh, and because I do a lot of government interviews, a lot of people fall into that. And so I think it's the moderator's job is to have that blend of you kind of know where you're going, but there's some twists on it. And um, uh, what I've started to do, and this is, this is pretty effective, is I'll, I'll go... I'll go to YouTube and I'll look up Rob Joel's and I'll find an interview that he did. Then I'll write down a quote. Then I'll come back in the middle of the video and I said, okay, now Marilyn, who said this? Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. Well, you did. <laughs> and all of a sudden the, the pretense is gone. And then she realizes that I did my homework and they can load down the shield and be authentic. And so um, I think that's prepared questions, prepared openers are fine, but then you got to have that I don't know what it is. Uh, conversation, authenticity, something. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely and and boy, do I agree with the word authenticity. Um, you know, I, one of my books is all about authenticity. I mean, that's all I I lecture about some for many companies. So you you didn't lose me on there. And John, I'm, I absolutely agree with you. That's the risk I'm taking. But I'm going forty minutes. I'm getting two. I'm getting three or four questions from my guests. 
So how are we going 40 minutes on this? Well, some of them won't stop talking, but, but normally we're going 40 minutes because that's just opening the door uh, for us to get there. If I'm on my game, I'm, I'm, it's the third and fourth question about you know, X, Y, Z that makes this a great interview. Um, but I, I absolutely agree with you. I, that's the risk I'm taking. Chad, I'd love to hear from you on this one. Well, I'd be curious if you guys consider cutting out some of that stuff that you realize, oh boy, they went, they went on a little long on that one. And the third question was great. Do you go back and you'll cut that out or no, or you'll leave it? Yeah, it's funny. I cut stuff out, but I, 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 I never cut you know, when they, I had one yesterday, like a coughing spell. Okay. That's getting cut out. Uh, you know, it, it, she was very sweet. And all of a sudden just went mute on me. And I started going. And I, and I, you know, after a few seconds, I did say, well, we, we got a little cough here, but um, that will be removed. Um, but I was, I was all proud of myself. I was like, Hey, look, I, I removed something. Um uh, I don't know, you know, great point. Um, maybe that's what I should do, but will that insult my guests when they see that I've hacked away uh, what they felt was important about their background? That's a nice cat that's just got, we got cat bombed. Okay. <laughs> I got one the same color, by the way. So you got a white face, a little, little white on the face. No, he's she? solid gray and solid he just gray. loves Zoom meetings. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a couple kittens a few months ago and- <laughs> I'm looking they, to see ours is named Ollie. I'm looking to see if Ollie's around. Um, come back again. Ollie will be here at some point. Uh, keep going, Chad. Sorry to break in. That the, the, the cat distracted me. Uh, uh, no, we were talking about cutting it, whether you would cut something like that out. I don't I don't mean necessarily the person's bio, but an answer that they, because you haven't done the pre-interview, maybe the answer goes on way too long and you're like, I, this really needs an editor. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm the boss of this podcast. I want to treat the guests with respect, but I also need to respect the audience's time as well. Uh, and you know, that's a judgment I have to make. I feel like. Yeah. You win that argument by for uh, sure. I totally I, agree with you. Go ahead, Marilyn. I would agree with David that you as the podcast host own that podcast. And I think, you know, a, a way around this concern of offending the guest is to let them know in advance that you, as the owner of the podcast, you know, are, will take the liberty to edit recording so that they just know in advance. Um, but yeah, it's all about respect to the audience. Yeah, you win every time you say that. I mean, and, and that really resonates with me. Um, uh, as a speaker, that's, you know, every question I get, it's always easy when I'm asked about seminars and things like that of everything depends on what my audience, if that's my, that's my customer. Um, right. So uh, that helps a lot. Um, I, I, I certainly know how to edit and I do editing, but I've always felt I didn't want to offend the one person as opposed to the millions who are listening. Go ahead, John. I do a lot of corporate interviews. And if I have a I had a very high level executive from T-Mobile and uh, the T-Mobile people wanted to listen to the edited podcast before it was released. And I said, well, good luck with that. You know, you get a checkbook and, and pay Chad to interview you. Uh, <laughs> but that, that, that's another problem that you have to think about too. What if someone says, well, I, well, Rob, you can't release this until I hear it and make sure everything sounds well. <laughs> It's not going to happen. It's just not. Gonna happen. So yeah. uh, that's and that's a, a thing that's happened over the years. Maybe that'd be a surprise for people. But I um, I did so much live radio and so much live TV that I just pour the. No one's ever had a coughing fit or anything. I just pour the concrete and Roman concrete, right? Pour the concrete and move on. And uh, uh, it just it seems to work out. So maybe it's just a, a talent, or skill, or stumble on it. So uh, now I want to I want to review this, uh, Rob, before you release the recording to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> people might ask yeah well i'm, I'm going to do a little editing of one oh, of yeah, the people me. here <laughs> i've i've been empowered with editing now <laughs> yes. i i'm going to get rid of the slow parts <clears throat> uh, <laughs> anyway how about the clothes uh what are you guys thinking about you know uh, i have the same voiceover guy you know thanks for listening you know and he directs them to the website and you know rate review and share and uh, that kind of thing and i have it ramp up as i'm sort of finishing and gets 
So, but um, thoughts, do, do you have a favorite closing line? Is that silly too? What, what do you think? Yeah, go ahead, Marilyn. Well, as a personal branding expert, I say your closing line is really important to reiterate your, what your brand is. So what is it you stand for? Make it short, sweet, memorable. That's the thing. So that they say, oh, that's the, you know, Rob is the guy that, you know, is, you know, going to give me those pocket size nuggets. But, you know, come up with that tagline that really encapsulates what you want to be known for. Yeah. John. Whenever I get my bumpers done, I have the, the beginning and the end. So I assume it's there. Um, last year, I, I did analysis of social media tweets impact on uh, downloads. And I did a four column regressive analysis. I hired a PhD to do it and I have all these numbers, but uh, now I'm studying videos. So I'm looking at, you know, David and what happens in video, you can graph it. It fades right down to the end. And I'm pretty sure with audio, the ones I've seen fades right down to the end too. And so um, drives are for show putts are for dose. So the, the opening is going to be much more important than the closing one, but the closing one just kind of closed the book, the, the book ends. And yeah. so it's a nice, I think just, it's what people expect. Right. You hear it on NPR, you hear it in all the local shows. And so they expect that, that bumper. So I never get just one. The bumper is always two. I've never done one bumper. It's always been two. Yep. And, uh, and I know that at the end, it's going to be, Hey, and John Gilroy talk about concrete construction. And they don't, you know, uh, but at the beginning, we can talk about, you know, advances in lightweight concrete construction for bridges. And so that's going to be the hook, but I'm sure David could give us three hours on that curve, that drop-off curve for video. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's really drop-off, isn't it, David? Well, um, you mean for the yeah, yeah when people you're watching listen, on YouTube yeah. and it's six minutes long. How many oh, people yeah. get into the yeah, six well, minutes? Yeah, the I, I don't do long format video, so <laughs> um, the, or the, you know the typical videos I do are either thirty to sixty second commercials or or like a three to five minute. Um, think uh, like morning news show style interview where it's like a quick boom 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 yeah because attention span will drop off really quickly well, you know i think you say five minute i think five minute is considered long, long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah but like i say most of most of what i would do would be 30 seconds 60 second or yeah the the longest i do is the three to five minute really i had a guy on my show uh two weeks ago who does creates these videos and the starting price is $30,000 for a three minute video. Um, and he goes into six figures, but it's really remarkable. How do you get somebody to stay for three minutes? You hire six or seven comedians. You hire, <laughs> I mean, he, he's great. He's, he's, there's 15 people working on these three minutes. He's surveying it. He's testing it. But, um, he also, you know, when he shows the numbers of what's going viral, et cetera, it's not an accident. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of thought in there. It's funny because in the seminar world, it's completely opposite in the podcast world. The close is vital. Everybody's, in, forget virtual. In a live thing, it's like most companies is like, you better not get up. I mean, you have to, you're sort of glued to your seat. So the ending is everyone's there they may be worn out but if you can stick your landing you can save the seminar you can save it podcasting is kind of the opposite it's like that's why i want to talk about the hook i think we end smart intelligently i'm sure hope you're still there and if you are you're going to get rewarded with something really powerful but i can't chain you to your seat like i can in, in a live seminar so um you know the hook is very important to me because i know it's going to be in the beginning David, were you going to say something? Yeah. 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 There was um, something similar to that, that uh, I think it was in the book Persuasion by Robert uh, Cialdini. Cialdini. I'm probably butchering his name, but Cialdini. Yeah. Italian. Yeah. So um, he talked about a, a um, I think it was a college professor, or I think it was him when he was lecturing in a college environment. What he would do is he would, at the beginning of the class, he would pose a question with an unresolved answer. And whereas prior to doing this technique, like five minutes before the end of the class, everyone would be like zipping up their backpacks and like almost, you know, one foot out the door. And when he started using this technique of like the unresolved mystery type of thing, he posed a question. He said, the bell rang 
uh, he forgot, he actually forgot to conclude to answer the question. The bell rang and no one left. They were like, wait a minute, you got to tell us, you know, what, what was it? What was the answer, <laughs> you know? So, you know, that really got the sticking power to the end. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, it's, it, have you ever read the book, uh, make it stick? No. Got a picture of a post-it on it. Um, so it's a fascinating book, Marilyn, if you're into the branding side of all this, grab that maybe 10 years ago, terrific book on why things stick and what sticks and what doesn't stick. And, you know, it, the book opens up with, you know, with the guy in the bathtub who wakes up with a note, your organs have been removed or whatever. And just how none of that has ever happened in the history of life. Uh, they're the only razor blade that was ever in an apple um, was a family member that that was disgruntled. And yet it changed the whole trajectory of, of Halloween for decades. Uh, why are certain things sticky and not, you know, how did that, how's that still sticking around? And, and, and uh, there's a formula there. I, I, I don't, I won't go over it and I don't remember some of it, but it's a, it's a very worthwhile book. I, um, and very successful, I've sold a lot of copies that book, um, but you might want to take Put a look it at down. it. Thanks. It's yeah. called sticky. What it's, is it? I think it's called make it stick. Make it stick. Yeah. And you'll know it. It'll have a big uh, post-it on the front. It's like three-dimensional. It looks like the post-it is coming off the page. It's very good. Made Great cover. Stick, it looks like. What's it? What's it called? Made to stick orange cover. Yeah. Yeah. What's the author's name? Uh, Chip Heath. Yeah, that's it. That's it looks it. like duct tape on the cover. Duct tape. Yeah, duct yeah. tape. That's the one. You got it right behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guessing or is it really back there? Is that I, even I, virtual? I, is that I, even real? I, I, I got it right back here. It's yeah. the orange book right there. Yeah, it's let right me see there. you pull it up. Let me see you pull one book off that shelf, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got 10 minutes. I'll be right back. That that's okay. That's okay because if you want to see me pull move a wall, there you go. <laughs> and who is the what's the author's last name? Heath. I think I think David said I think it's Heath. two brothers, Chip and Dan Heath. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I've read I think I've read another one of their books, Switch, from yeah. 2010. They're good. These guys are really good authors and they their yeah. books are um, sort of like what we're talking about. A I mean, I remember the first page. It was in the bathtub. I mean, we didn't even say hi and here's what we're going to talk about. We are in the bathtub with a guy waking up. Uh, they're very good at what they do. Uh, yeah. So yeah, okay, take a look at that. Um, all right, other thoughts, other thoughts. I have so, real yeah. books. <laughs> this yeah. one I've actually read. I've got other books that I'd like to read someday when I have time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can send you a couple, couple books you might want to read. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, actually, here, here's here's my, I'm, I'm going to be uh, boastful, but I'm talking about authenticity. That's the book that I wrote that, that deals with authenticity. Um, and um, I, you know, if I could just do eight seconds on this. Boy, I have to tell you, it, it's I, it, what inspired me was I work with people who are in career transition, um, and you know, in the in its heyday when there wasn't a pandemic, it'd be a hundred to two hundred people in a room on a Tuesday night, and um, I look out at the crowd, and I'm not one of them were in there because they couldn't add fast enough. Uh, their hard skills weren't failing them; um, the soft skills do, and so it's really near and dear to my heart of trying to help people who just can't hear it. They it just it's like music. You know, um, Chad, I listen to when you talk, I, you know, I think it's just who you are, but you know, you, you have a, a lot of resonance in your voice and it goes up and it comes down and it does some nice things. Um, congratulations. Thank your mom and dad. You know, um, I'm sure that you've worked with it, but I'm just saying it comes easy to some people and for others it doesn't. And I just, I wish the school systems and I'll get off my soapbox, but I wish we spent more time on, I don't even like the word soft skills. I call them performance skills, but on helping people who can't hear that as well. Anyway, all right. I was I was stalling until John got back. I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> all that? I found, will it fly? Oh, good. Con contagious. Okay. And the power of habit. But I didn't get that one. So but, uh, I can't Well, I was find tap it. dancing while you were gone. So Oh, you know. yeah. Yeah, so I... Gotta be somewhere. Maybe it's a Rob. Maybe Rob took it or he's loaned it to him or something. Yeah, sure. I came through the screen and took it. Uh, all right. So, so 
I think we've got some, I know I'm walking away with some really good stuff today. One of which is, and you saw it happen to me when I was giving an example of how I seem to always wind into some version of tell me about yourself, <laughs> although I don't mean to, it, it just sort of, I just end there. And um, I'm not doing that anymore. You raised $5 million. How? That's going to be my first question. I mean, something along that line, but not how did we get here? Um, so thank you for that. Uh, other thoughts? We've got, uh, we've got about six more minutes. So I don't question. Um, so if let's say you're a li live streaming and you're not, you don't have the luxury of uh, editing, you know, sort of like a live TV uh, in the old days, but um, how do you strike a balance between like if someone's kind of getting too far rambling off course, like I am now, no, <laughs> uh, how do you balance between not wanting to interrupt and not wanting to get too far off course? I'm going to let the, I'm going to, yeah, go I ahead, guess John. John knows exactly how to handle this. So what? You interrupt. What is this, you know, a, a tea class? Or, I don't know. John, no, that's you, interesting you say that. That's interesting you say that. I want to get to, I mean, that's how you do it. Right. You just interrupted <laughs> me. It's a perfect example of that, you know? You know, David, that's it. You know, it's, I mean, it's not, what are they going to do? Punch you? <laughs> and it's going to happen. I've done it so many times. Is that, and, and what I like to do is I like to have a, a, a link back to, you know, so, so in the start of the interview, David says he was raised in Massachusetts. And then he starts rambling at the end. Oh, pardon me, Dave. Now in Massachusetts, would they, <laughs> and because and, all of a sudden it goes back to them. You know, if I say, well, North, North Dakota, they don't care. But if I say, well, in Massachusetts, they have concrete construction. Oh, it comes back to them. So I think, I think the people think about themselves most of the time. And I think if you can listen carefully enough and take notes on spe specific things is, oh, so at MIT, they have the uh, non-plastic concrete lab there. Is that right? Oh, yeah. And so the interruption is not being rude. I think it's just part of the skill. And so, and if you can interrupt something with like, so, so Rob, did you swim this morning? Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, I did. Swim this morning. Way. I'm, I'm yeah. seeing if what works in seminars works with you and it apparently doesn't in the real world when you're live, it's so easy because what we do is we just move in on the participant. Right. And, yeah. And, and I mean, we don't jump on top, but, uh, but we get just close enough where we've just by six inches invaded their space and unconsciously people will just sort of bring whatever it is in for a landing. And then we, I call the yo-yo and then we just sort of walk back with it as we're doing exactly what you did, Chad. But I'm the same way. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really well trained in the seminar world, the podcast world. I, I, there's a part of me because I'm filming and it may be a really good piece that I'm going to snip. And so I don't want my, uh, the snippet of me going, you know, uh, trying to cut in. Hey, Dave, speaking of yo-yos. Hey, Rob, speaking of yo-yos, weren't you the national champion? <laughs> That's yeah. how you could break it in because he, he used the word, then he used the word that he used. Speaking yeah. of yo-yos, don't you have a solid gold yo-yo? And, and does anybody, I mean, I was just thinking of this uh, because again, I don't want to out myself on my own screen. Um, <laughs> what about putting the, uh, the icon of a hand up? Have, have, have you ever done that on a, you know, with that work? I'm just oh, curious. Yeah. yeah, it works for me. I, I do a lot of interviews that are audio, but I use Zoom so I can make the transitions. Right. Because I actually don't want to physically do it. Um, it may, I, I, with my luck, I'm a pretty lucky guy. I don't want to sound negative, but Murphy's Law would be, I'll be on the, the best snippet I got. And I'm on the other part going, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> so yo-yos, why? <laughs> uh, so I, I, you know, I, I'd rather do it discreetly, but I really want to discreetly put my hand up. So yeah, I'm going to try to uh, put an icon up and see if they, you know, and maybe I'll add it to my list of, if you see the yellow hand go up, <laughs> wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up, please. So anyway, well, John, uh, you got to start I, a new podcast called, what are you going to do? Punch me? What are you <laughs> punch me? I've been punched a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, particularly on Zoom, we're very brave. Yeah, go ahead. Question for Rob, you were just talking about snippets, you might have a good snip because you record everything, even though it's a podcast. So then do you sometimes post the video snippet? Is that what you're saying of the interview? Yeah, I'm getting better at that. I um, for, for a while, what I would do was I would just have it on my desktop and up, upload it to LinkedIn or whatever. But now I'm creating for every podcast interview I have, and, and I only started a while ago. So um, and I didn't first 50 I didn't do but for now there's probably 50 
YouTube videos in a file that people can go to, but I, but I, I snip it. I have like a little curtain that goes, you know, John Gilroy on, you know, what it's like to have a fake bookcase behind your head. And then, you know, it, there's, you know, I'll put a little write up, you know, John wasted everybody's time today by showing them his bookcase and then brought a real book for some reason. And, uh, but, um, and I put it to answer your question. I'm a big LinkedIn guy. Um, I put it on LinkedIn. And so I have, um, you know, um, a little thing and it, and it usually says to hear this podcast and over a hundred more. And so I've got a, a place for people to go. And I'm now got, um, um, I never really cared about YouTube, but more people are signing up to follow me on YouTube uh, because rather than take it off my desktop, now I've got a place for them to actually go um, at other times. That's, so that's yeah. such a great idea. I'm just thinking as, as a podcast guest in the past, I, I mean, that's another level to ask your guest to say, be prepared for this to be shared as video because I love being a podcast guest because it's just my voice. I don't have to get makeup and hair and dressed, you know, so. Well, on mine, you know, coming in, I mean, I tell people um, we're going to be recording and I'm going to be looking for about uh, a minute and a half, max two minutes of, okay. of something we get there. So, and so and I've had people go, all right, give me a second. Yeah. I would want to know that in advance. Yeah, yeah, they, they do it just like that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I actually really like that. So I'm, I'm doing two things. One, I'm sort of getting a small following on YouTube, which I never cared about, but I thought, why, why not? Um, building a nice library of some of the guests are better than others, but of little snippets from everybody. And um, just drawing, you know, getting some views on LinkedIn, getting some shares, getting some comments um, and likes, uh, because I'm really, although I'll tweet, I'm not a big Twitter guy. And, um, and so that's my, most of my clients are business clients. So that's where they go. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. And I've never had anybody say, no, um, I don't okay. want to do that. So that's they'll be there. No, thanks. Okay, cool. All right. Well, listen, it's 1030 guys did good. Uh, we'll be back in a month. Feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I, you can get to me on the meetup side, but I'm going to real fast, just write it in the, uh, chat side. Um, of things here. Um, so it's Rob at Jollis.com. That's pretty easy. Uh, if you got a topic and we'll, you know, let's bring it, bring it up, but, um, you know, we will put this on Facebook. If you haven't joined our humble little Facebook group, please do. And, um, great seeing everybody. Um, was, All right, thank you. Have a good month. Thank All right? you very much. Great Thanks. conversation. Bye. Good, good. Glad everybody liked it. John, good luck with the transition, brother. I'm going to go to the library and get some more books. Good. <laughs> Show every book but mine, please. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs>